CGI is one of the largest global IT services provider with close to 90,000 employees, a 24 billion Canadian dollars market cap. Uh, Mr. Schindler, rapidly, how do you best describe what CGI is doing exactly? Yeah, so in short, we're helping our clients across industries be more effective and efficient in their businesses. And we do that through the combination of providing them information and uh, technology to run their businesses better. And, uh, and, and we do that, we, we pay out, call it end-to-end uh, -end services. So we do that, everything from the business and uh, strategic IT consulting to building and developing some of the things that we recommend or uh, design for them. And then we actually run and operate those, uh, those solutions for them, including we, uh, we provide business, uh, proprietary business solutions we offer as a software as a service and, and the business processing on top of them. So we're really end-to-end -end services helping our clients help others. Uh, the economy and the impact of inflation on consumers and companies, a looming recession is on everyone's lips right now. Uh, how are you seeing clients, clients adjusting to their IT budgets uh, right now, actually? Yeah, so uh, it, it's interesting to, to see what clients are doing. Of course, they're, they're planning and looking at what happens with, uh, with maybe persistent inflation and or an economic slowdown. But I'll tell you, one of the solutions that they're looking at is continuing to invest in IT. Part of that is through operational efficiencies that IT provides to them. And part of that is as they look at the last set of slowdowns and the, the rapid uh, digitization that's going on, they don't want to fall behind. And so they want to continue to invest in IT so that coming out of this business cycle, they're best positioned to continue to grow their company. So, and, and we see evidence of this, uh, Matthew. So we do proprietary uh, research. Uh, this past year, we talked to over 1,600 uh, clients and prospective clients across 10 different industries in 30 different countries around the world. And what we heard from them is that 80% uh, of them said, we're gonna keep our IT budgets flat or increase them. And part of that is that uh, IT modernization that they're going through. And they're increasingly turning to companies like CGI for managed services so that they can handle the, uh, the, the fact that uh, inflation is making it harder for them to get talent in themselves, but they also need those operational savings from IT. Uh, last quarter, I think your bookings were down 200 million to 3.4 billion year over year. Do you see an impact on, on bookings right now uh, at CGI or it's stable? What's interesting is, uh, is not really. We're seeing a transition as we go from uh, what I call systems integration and consulting work, which tend to be shorter term projects. And part of that was driven by the fact that uh, clients just couldn't uh, get the IT talent that they needed. As we move over to more of that managed services that I just talked about, uh, those are longer term uh, deals that uh, are bigger in size and bigger in length, and that will drive the bookings back up. Okay. Uh, what areas are executives focusing on right now as part, as part of their digital transformation? What, what can we see ac across different industries? Yeah, so uh, across all the industries, what we see are that clients are looking at prioritizing uh, what I call holistic enterprise strategies. So they have a lot of discrete systems. They've invested in digitization more in a discrete way. And now they're really uh, investing to connect those across. So that happens differently in different industries, as you asked. So in manufacturing, it would be taking all those discrete machines, some of which are decades old, and unlocking the data that's contained in those machines and creating a smart factory, for example. In retail, it might be using the, the fact that uh, more and more of their customers are continuing to use digital channels, but still coming into the store. How are they dealing with that omni-channel, uh, taking, using uh, advanced predictive analytics and or uh, artificial intelligence to give a better customer and, and more consistent customer experiences. And, and financial services banks are doing uh, similar work, uh, including modernizing and making that their, uh, their services more relevant and applicable to their customers. So it, it takes on different flavors, but it's all really around that same holistic enterprise strategy that, uh, that we see clients working on now. 
Okay, so IT spending is there to stay, it's healthy. Uh, to which extent do you believe the rapid pace of digital transformation we, that we saw during the pandemic, that this will continue? Yeah, well, there, there's, uh, I guess there, there's two key factors here. The first is we're still in the early days of, of digital transformation. Even with all of the investments that have gone on in, uh, in, in, uh, in industries around the world, to make this better, uh, the reality is that same proprietary research that I talked to you about, only 25%, uh, when we asked our, our clients, uh, are you achieving the results from your digital transformation uh, efforts, the full uh, return on those investments, only 25% are actually achieving the uh, expected returns that they're getting. So, and part of that is, as we talked, they're more discreet, and there's more investment that has to happen to pull all of that together. But, but as one, uh, and that's, that's just in the current wave of, of digitization. But as one client recently told me on a, on a trip to, uh, to Europe, this executive said to me, you know, George, we've come to realize that the digitization race never ends because there's always another set of technologies. And, and I would say that, uh, that uh, consumers almost have an insatiable uh, desire for everything digital. I just want to go back to this 24% figure that you mentioned where executives are, are saying that they're achieving the expected results from their digital investment. 25%, uh, it's, it's quite low. Why is it so low? Why are, are, they, are they so disappointed actually? Well, I, I, again, I wouldn't say they're, they're disappointed. They're just not getting the full returns because they're getting returns at a, at a point solution. So they're, they're not disappointed. It's just that some, those 25% those are more advanced. And, and those ones that are more advanced, we, we actually looked at it and there's, there's three characteristics that uh, those clients have that others don't have. One is they're more uh, business agile as an organization. And a key factor in that is what we see when we, in our proprietary research, they're more aligned operationally between business and IT, almost the lines become blurred. That's what the advanced uh, organizations are doing. Uh, secondly, they're, they're modernizing that entire IT environment. As I mentioned a couple of times already, they're, they're really looking at the end-to-end the -end holistic uh, environment and, and they're addressing business transformation that way then. That's the, that's the third item. And, and so that means that culturally, their organization runs differently. They're extending their digitization to their entire ecosystem. So their partners, uh, they, they extend that digital transformation, not just within their own organization, but they extend it to the, uh, to the entire ecosystem. And then third, uh, and this is increasingly important, they're building sustainability into that. So they're getting better returns from that. And, and we estimate that they're probably three, four years ahead of the others in, in doing that. What that says is there's a lot of catch up to happen, which is why I answered the question I did on, uh, uh, are, we, uh, are we in the late stages of digitization? Um, we expect that during, the, uh, during any so sort of economic slowdown, that gap could actually widen if others don't continue to invest in IT, which is why you heard the 80% number. Uh, we, we do see uh, clients looking at continuing to invest in IT even with the specter of increased inflation and or economic slowdown. And these, this 25% of executives, are, are, are they in larger companies or mid-sized companies or? Yeah, so I, I should mention that the, the, uh, the client base for CGI is primarily enterprise uh, clients. These are, these are larger enterprises, uh, typically uh, regional or, or global in nature. And uh, now you see that trickle down to the small and medium sized market as well, but we're really talking about the largest enterprises in the world. Uh, now for the 75%, what are the barriers that they're facing right now to adopt what the 25% is doing? <laughs> yeah, well, what's interesting, I kind of, I kind of uh, alluded to this when you look at the characteristics of those that are, uh, they're getting the, the most returns. It's not really technology. It's more of a cultural one. Uh, making sure that the organizations are able to adapt and accept the change that's going on, including extending that to the, to the partnerships 
and to the customers themselves. And so those that really prioritize uh, the, the digital strategies for the organization, and, and, and by the way, we hear this from these same, uh, these same clients. So that proprietary research, uh, we ask the question, what's your single biggest barrier? And they, they uh, universally answer, it's, uh, it's cultural. And that's why we've invested a lot in that business consulting arm. And I mentioned bringing and aligning business and IT together. That's, uh, that's really one of the, uh, the elements that companies like CGI can help with. Uh, let's, let's look into the future now. Um, once all organizations got up, have got up with the leaders, once everything is in the cloud, uh, what's next for AI? Is it over? You kind of said it, it is no, but can, can we move on? What's happening next? <laughs> yeah, well, you know, back to the, to the digitization race is, uh, is never over. Um, here's what we see. One, as, as you mentioned, we're still in the early stages. So, but let's just accelerate past that uh, per your question and uh, suggest that the 75% have caught up. Um, there, there are three really uh, what we uh, would call macro trends that I think are going to drive the next wave of digitization for, uh, for IT services. The first is, is obvious, it's accelerated uh, during the pandemic, and that is the democratic, uh, demographic shift that is, uh, is going on uh, in the world today. You know, we had an uh, almost endless supply of new talent coming in as, uh, as uh, more economies uh, entered the, uh, the, uh, the, the world's economy, uh, in, including other demographics, but that's all reversing now, and it's shifting the other direction. And so what we're going to see is people are going to turn, organizations are going to turn to, uh, to technology to ad address the displaced jo jobs that, that people aren't going to be able to fulfill. And uh, that's where I talked about the smart factories, et cetera. The second big one then is the energy transition. So as we rush to decarbonize for all the right reasons in the world, as we rush to decarbonize all industries, everything from, uh, from obvious, the obvious uh, energy ones, but to the manufacturing and even uh, sustainable finance, et cetera, that transition requires infrastructure. And of course it requires wind turbines, and, uh, and batteries, but it also requires data infrastructure. And we're just scratching the surface of that. So that's going to be a big driver of the next wave of digitization. And the last is this supply chain reconfiguration. It's clear that we were maybe over-optimized on, uh, on the supply chains. And as we bring that back to be closer to where the production uh, occurs uh, what, and, and the delivery of the services occurs, what you're going to see is again, more investment as, uh, as entire supply chains get reconfigured, investment in the IT, because the data is the gold that allows all of that to happen. Uh, in, the meantime, in the meantime, you're still focusing this year on M&As, $1 billion, I think, that you're focusing on. Yeah. What can you say about this very quickly? Uh, will there be any major acquisitions or we're talking about uh, many small acquisitions? What can you say? So we, uh, we, we set out a, a goal to do approximately a billion dollars in, uh, in investments this uh, past year. Uh, we're, we're, we're near that, uh, near that level. And we would expect to do the same, if not more, next year. And there are a couple drivers that uh, would allow us to do that, even in an economic downturn. At the time of economic downturn, as we discussed, uh, companies are looking at operational efficiencies and cost savings. typically the larger providers are able to do that. So that drives a lot of the, the smaller IT services firms to look to team up. So there's a, they're motivated to, uh, to make that happen. And on the other side, obviously valuations come down during a, during a turndown. And uh, with the balance sheet that uh, CGI has and the strength of that and uh, a fixed interest rate on all of our uh, long-term debt, uh, we're in a good position to, to, uh, to, to be a consolidator in an industry that is consolidating. 